Okay, so I really got to keep moving, which I'm actually pretty impressed with where we're at somehow. But um, I just want to go over what we do here in the shop as far as getting ready for potential storage or just a good rule of thumb in general. I'm going to go ahead and drain this customer's gas. I imagine it is ethanol. Um, it's got ethanol in it just by the color it has. Um, it's got the distinct yellowish, more like a, a urine tint to it almost. Um, I want to explain briefly, try to get this uh, as accurately as I can without spending too much time, what that might look like. And right here, I'm hoping this uh, picks up because I can't really gonna come back here and try to I gotta just be sure because this is a pretty good jar so that right there on the bottom is what you would call phase separation so this is a jar of ethanol fuel I thought I dated it which I guess not I'll probably start another jar but anyway this is ethanol based fuel and that on the bottom there is what we call phase separation that can happen in as little as two weeks um, due to something as simple as a vented fuel tank, similar to the one we're going to use here to drain this, um, and the humidity in the air or condensation thereof that can get inside that fuel and in, in the volume that might be left in that tank if it's you know, not 100% full there. Um, and then as soon as that happens, this process starts and occurs. Um, this jar was, I would say, I would guess eight months or so old when I first started showing it. Where now, I'm sure, I guess I've been showing this jar for probably over two years at least now, if not even longer. But the point is, this can happen in two weeks, um, in little as. And I've heard stories that would align with that. Um, once again, whether the customer's being honest or not, I can't confirm all that, but I could just tell you, if you do this long enough, fuel's going to be a, a big situation. It's going to be one of your biggest money makers is what it boils down to. Uh, it's, it's one of the main reasons that my business went where it went was fuel related problems and, and learning how to deal with them accordingly. Um, so ethanol based fuel by any means necessary try to steer your customers away 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 this is small engine killers um, so right now we are going to reset the camera up I'm going to pause it and do that <laughs> okay so um, put this drawer back basically what I'm going to do now is drain this fuel. If I were to guess, it's approximately, I don't know, it, it could be a couple weeks old. It could be just before the storm. It may be, um, it may be mostly new with a small little bit on the bottom. Let's say, you know, a little bit from last year. Who knows? I've seen everything when it comes to fuel and, and age. I have. At least, well, every time I say that, I will see something new, so never mind. I'm sure now something else is going to come about. But anyway, what we're doing right here is we're draining out this fuel. It actually looks quite clean. Um, it's not terribly old, so it's definitely, I wouldn't say it's more than a year old by it, but for certain. Um, it's probably, you know, at least within 2020's time frame purchased and, and fueled here by the condition and the color it appears to be coming out. Um, I have a lot of cu customers ask me what we do with the old fuel. And as we grow, it's definitely something I've started addressing in a, in a you know a fuel disposal manner. But currently, you know, a lot of the fuel we get is within you know this quality or not terribly stale. Not enough that my 2005 Dodge Dakota Beater work truck can't burn at all. Mostly, I mean, I've I can't even begin to think about how many full tanks of gas I poured through this one gallon or. You know, a two or three, three, two and a half or three gallon container that I use to fill out of um, when I'm doing this, uh, because the gas is still perfectly good. It's just in a small engine, the the nozzles and the ports in which the gas needs to flow, it's it's much smaller than a car. And furthermore, in a car, we have fuel injectors these days, pretty much. And a fuel injector, there's no carburetor bowl in which fuel 
sits or remains still or present at any given time. A fuel injector is, is generally electronically controlled and it's, it's done in a pulsating manner and where it takes um, similar like a spray can when you would spray paint something and you get that aerosol mist um, it would be almost identical to that or, or even well not so much this it's more of that that nice fine mist and that's kind of what happens in your car it takes the the fuel at, at the right amount with a certain amount of voltage applied to that injector and it, and it creates a mist inside that that combustion chamber which is a lot more um, reliable and they've actually started doing it in the small end industry as well um, on I'd say 2000 maybe even 2015 and up at this point I, I've seen some vanguards and some Kohlers that have fuel injection they're, they're definitely in the commercial industry more prevalent so um, as them guys you know burn thousands of dollars worth of fuel a year in some cases depending on the company and the scale of it um, so yeah it's a lot easier to sell a, a three thousand dollar engine to a company that you know makes twenty thousand or a hundred thousand dollars a year with that piece of equipment well then they might be willing to spend three thousand on a commercial Vanguard because if, if you would understand what they may spend with a company like myself getting fuel related problems taken care of There's many there's a handful of customers that I know have have generated thousands of dollars of income within this business And it's not because they they fail or neglect to use their equipment. It's simply because um, a lot of times lack of understanding or just simple beginners type luck type of things um, and then some people just just truly need your help and that's that's what it kind of allows allows us to do is just shed light on what's going on and how we can prevent it so right now we're draining this ethanol rigging gas we're gonna then the unit runs fine right now it needs an electric starter but since we're potentially at the end of the season you just never know in Pennsylvania um, I'm gonna either refuel with Aspen 4 um, which is a Swedish product, or we're going to refuel it with the four cycle true fuel, uh, both of which are non ethanol, high octane. Uh, one's an alkalite, one's a hydro light fuel, if I'm thinking of them terminology is correct. Uh, the Aspen 4 is a newer product we just received, and the true fuel we've had, we've considered tried and true and trusted. Um, so, True Fuel and Aspen Fuel, they both claim to have, between the two companies, a two to five year shelf life. Um, and uh, True Fuel, so far, I've had very great success. I have had little to no complaints from anyone. Short of it can be a little costly. I'll be honest, I'm paying 15 or so dollars a gallon, if I'm thinking correctly. We sell it here at the shop for uh, $20 a gallon down at the local hardware store I saw about two weeks ago they're advertising it for $22.99 plus tax a gallon so yeah currently we're doing 20 bucks a gallon including tax and uh, it's it's really not to make money on that it's really to just provide that fuel for our customers uh, it just makes me feel better knowing that they have every opportunity that this equipment may run you know this upcoming week if needed or it will run in 2023 2024 um, so as much as it might sound or feel expensive up front when you're like, oh my gosh, it's 20 bucks a gallon. Well, I can guarantee you it's, it's significantly cheaper than even this. This is what we call a soft flush where we're going to drain this. Um, we'll let this all clear out, probably blow it out with the air truck just to get whatever else we can out. Then I'm going to refuel it with once again Aspen fuel or the four cycle true fuel. Then since this equipment runs just fine, I'll then push the... Um, button on the left hand side on the float or the the bowl there and we will um press that allowing that fuel to start refilling the carburetor um from after i drain out whatever ethanol based fuel is remaining in that as well here next um and then we will run the equipment until it gets to full operating temperature just to hear how it runs and make sure everything sounds correct and in tune for the way that I would expect it to run with a you know, couple week old gallon of true fuel or aspen fuel, whatever, whatever fuel we decide here shortly. Um, but uh, I love the funnel setup. 
This is awesome. It helps keep things clean. We have a flexa funnel. Wow, this is pretty sweet. It's a uh, uh, form of funnel. Form of funnel. And I got this off of Amazon. And it pretty much, uh, you can bend it, maneuver it, and do whatever you want with it. And it's it's kind of like a piece of rubber, but it's it's made in the USA. It's patented. At first, I was a little salty because I think it was like, it's either 15 or 20 bucks. But I'll tell you what, I bought it. At least a year ago now I, I want to guess and it would it's been worth every penny there is some spots it, it mainly bought it for right here even there's a, a one I can show you that that's exactly the type of thing um, so if we get down here and look this is we're actually I just got the part in for this today so stay tuned for that it's gonna be a, a mess but anyway, right there, you see that uh, extension that brings that over the frame? Well, not everyone has that. Uh, a lot of units don't have that extension, so it'll just run down into that hole, which goes all over your... Um, it could go all over your... The internals down there. Some of them are friction discs. There's... Yeah, I call it a pie plate. It's what the friction disc rides on. Um, I guess it's a track... I I can't, it doesn't matter, traction disc, it's something. I, I, I haven't even looked, I haven't looked, had to buy one for a while, so I don't know the exact correct terminology at the moment, but the friction disc, we replace them fairly often, so I know what that is. Um, but either way, that, if you don't have that, or riding mowers that don't have the quick disconnect, uh, it's very, it's, it sucks a lot when you're, you're just wiping up oil everywhere, or you saw last week when I showed in that video with this, case the oil over the floor stuff like that occurs um, a lot easier when you don't have a product or a tool like this which you can kind of form it's thin you can stick it in places and then you can direct fuel more like a stream in the direction you want to um, it's pretty cool and then same thing here I got this one when I had a coupon down at the local hardware store might be able to find it on Amazon it's called Lil, Lil Max an LX-1704 galvanized funnel with a flexible pipe. Um, it's pretty cool. Uh, one and a half quart, three pint, 1.4 liter capacity. Um, it's got a little picture of a tractor and a car, semi truck, a tractor, a boat, a dump truck, a motorcycle, a steamboat, a push mower, and a nice old pickup truck. So, yeah, it's cool. It flexes, it funnels. It's got a cool little screen inside there. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a screen inside there that allows it to catch contaminants and whatnot. I really like that feature for the fact I told you guys I, I burn a lot of any of this ethanol based gas or gas like question. Anytime we're going to potentially dispose gas for whatever logical reason we do, if it's good enough, we definitely use it. I mean, we have a beat old truck. I bought it for a good price, and I I understand what I've been doing. I don't know that I'd recommend it to you guys because it very well could it could hurt or damage a car. I'm not saying dump this bad gas in your cars. I'm just telling you what I do, and I can say I've got a lot of free tanks of gas, no check engine lights yet. The truck only's got 95,000, but all things considered, it's a good truck. It's done really well for me. I don't take the best care of it. One of the ways I don't is also burning this gas. Do I care price of gas compared to how many tanks of gas I burned? Even if I do uh, incur a fuel related issue, I believe the amount of money saved with the fuel that I'm burning and allowing other customers to have better opportunities for their equipment like this to run when they need it to um, with the amount of repairs that we do because that doesn't because of this fuel that we're, we're essentially helping them dispose of and me being a smart businessman understand it's not cheap to get rid of stale gas there's there's not much intended use so make sure you have a half tank of gas in your pickup truck per se 11 gallons of known fresh fuel and if you're going to mix two gallons or so to that or or what have you in my experience, so far, it hasn't done any any very ill effects to my $1,200 Dodge Dakota pickup truck, in which you know, I put a decent bit, well, a little bit of work in, decent bit of work into at the beginning. But at this point, I have four shocks and other crap that desperately needs to be put on that truck, and I've just I've not had the time to do it. So I'm going to need to do it here sooner or later, or 
whatnot, but I'm gonna try to go maybe pick up a car tonight since my tax accountant said it uh, it could happen. So that's what I'm gonna try to do. Finish this day up and we're gonna maybe go pick up a car. So I'm gonna finish this, blow that out like I said, um, finish draining the fuel, we're gonna refuel it, and then I'm gonna run the unit till it gets good and hot, and that also allows me to know that that true fuel made it into the engine and all the way through the fuel system 100%. I mean, once you can feel confident that that true fuel or the Aspen fuel or whatever product of that comparable similarity um, you decide to use, in my particular opinion, is, is best, um, make sure before you just call it good and fill this tank up that you start the equipment. I recommend at least three to five minutes of runtime. Um, I'm going to have to take it outside to do that. I've been more conscientious about running it in here because I don't feel there's really adequate ventilation so I've been trying to just make sure that we don't run equipment in here as much as necessary as much as possible so I'm going to take it outside to do all that I got to finish up this video is getting a lot longer and I really do have to accomplish things if I do want to potentially go explore the opportunities this evening so alrighty guys like share subscribe put a link in the description below for this funnel and hopefully this little max and I know I found like some quarts of true fuel. I was pretty discouraged that they're not offering gallons or even the aspen fuel. So I'm gonna see what I can do about that. But anyway, that's what we're gonna do. Thanks guys, peace.